I've had a handful of paranormal experiences in my life so far, but the one that really sticks out was when I was in sixth grade at my friend's house. My friend Bear just had his brother die in a car accident, and so I would go over and hang out at his house with him so that he didn't feel so alone. Well, one night after playing video games, drinking soda and just being kids, we decided to just sit and talk about whatever came up. We spoke about school, girls, and eventually, his brother. He explained everything that had happened, and how he felt that I was somewhat of a brother to him. Well, soon after that talk, we both fell asleep on his bed, and whilst I was sleeping, I felt this weird movement. I couldn't tell what it was until I looked over at Bear, who was completely out, moving like something was shaking him. As you can imagine, I got scared, and looked around to see what it could be. But then it stopped. But not for long. A few moments later, the whole bed was shaking, and I was completely paralysed with fear. What was this thing? What did it want? I eventually forced myself to close my eyes until the shaking stopped. I didn't open them again that night, and in the morning, I asked Bear if he felt the shaking last night, and he said he didn't feel a thing. Was I going crazy that night? Could it have been his brother? Or something else entirely? I have no clue, but it still remains one of the creepiest and most bizarre things that has ever happened to me. When I was in the third grade, I would go home late every single day. You see, my father was a lawyer, and his cases were either in the afternoon and went on very long, or they were held far away, and regardless, he'd pick me up and I'd go home between 6 and 8pm, even though my classes usually ended at 3. I didn't really sweat waiting for him. I was a kid. I played with my friends until they went home, I did my homework, read my books, and after they left, I just waited for my dad. It was sort of perfect. By evening, all that I had to do was go home, eat, watch TV, and then sleep. Looking back now, I loved having this simple routine. But all of that was shattered after this experience. I recall that there was this immensely popular game in the Philippines called Beyblade. On this day, I was really excited my mum had just bought it for me yesterday and it was the first time that I could bring it to school to play with it. I was so excited that after the school day ended, we all detoured to the library to return and borrow books and I raced my friends, Dens and Gab, towards the front balcony of our building. This balcony was accessed by a short hallway that turned to a dead end with a boys bathroom and a girls bathroom on the other side. Reaching it, then suggested that we should close the bathroom so that we could comfortably lean on the doors and play the game. Gabby and I agreed and searched the cubicles and behind the doors of the girls' bathroom to make sure there wasn't anyone there so that they were going to be mistakenly locked inside as we did so. Dens did the same in the boys' bathroom. We then all agreed that it was free of people and Gab and I closed the doors and used the padlocks attached to close the door properly. We then started to play our game. I took my seat on the floor, having my back to the hallway. Gab sat in front of the ladies' bathroom, facing me, and Dens was reclining on the padlock door of the male's bathroom. We'd been playing the game for an hour, and I loved it. But then all of a sudden, Gab felt a jolt on her back as she sat reclining on the door. She stopped reclining and massaged her back, and as she did so, we heard a big thud like someone had kicked the door. This one kick suddenly became a succession of kicks and we started to hear wailing. The wailing of a woman inside the toilet. We all stood up and tried opening the door as it was evident the woman inside was starting to wail louder and louder, alternating between wailing and sobbing. I told Gab that I was sure that no one was inside when we went to check and the three of us started panicking as we were trying to disengage the padlock on the bathroom. We only managed to dent it, realising that it was hopeless. Our eight-year-old bodies just couldn't break the lock. So the three of us went down and found the nearest guard maintenance worker we could find and explained to them what happened. 
They then went to call the female guard janitor. And we kept saying that we were sorry and kept repeating that we didn't know that there was someone there, even though we were sure that we searched the whole bathroom before we closed it. Gab and I were nearly in tears and Denz was white as a ghost. We were going to be in so much trouble. They quickly asked where it was and followed us and began to quicken their pace as they started to hear the wailing too. It was so loud that it sounded like it was almost in front of us, when in reality, it was really far away. The wailing was deafening, and the sheer thought that we were to blame for this woman's anguish and the possible trouble that we were going to be in made us want to just lay down on the floor and cry. But we kept on going. We climbed the stairs and passed the hallway until we arrived in front of the door. The wailing was louder than before and the janitors quickly unlocked the door and just as the female guard rushed in, leaving us outside, the cry stopped. The entry was not met by a sigh of relief, but rather an eerie silence. Perplexed, the two adults searched each cubicle and even behind the doors. They found nothing. No one. Thinking back, I guess their sudden change of reactions to this phenomenon dazed and perplexed and scared them very quickly. And that made us even more scared. The janitor slowly closed the door and helped us take our trolley bags with our books inside and guided us down the stairs to the main office where the guards were. They gave us some water and snacks to calm us down since the three of us could not stop crying. The head guard would never have believed such a tale if he hadn't seen the distraught look of the two adult guards, followed by three crying children, trying to tell their own recounts of what happened. He just listened to us, and the guards and janitors made a note on their small whiteboard that the two bathrooms were to be searched thoroughly throughout the night. That experience of mine frightened us enough to actually just play in front of the guards' head office until we went home for the following years. I always went home late still, since I never told my parents about it, and they seemed to have never been informed by the school, but Gab and I never frequented that bathroom, ever again. So I would like to talk about the true experience that got me believing in the paranormal. First off, I need to mention that over the years I have gone to many tacky and purely touristic ghost towns and tours. But when I arrived to Jerome in Arizona, it just felt different from the start. Now Jerome is a quaint little mountaintop town in Arizona, partly isolated from the fair amount of area and is part of an odd amount of tragedies, ranging from mine cave-ins to massive tuberculosis outbreaks. I've heard about this place by a friend who lives in the area and I eventually planned to stay via Airbnb with a nice older couple during my visit to visit the friend that told me about this place. When I arrived I was very surprised at just how quiet the town actually is. Besides the bars, everyone just seemed in harmony with the history of the town. Before I'd made an arrangement to go on any ghost tours, a pair of old local guides of father and son who just happened to live in an old cathedral said that they'd show me around the town and some of the more popular haunted spots. We began the tour with myself and a young couple also staying in town for the night. I started talking to them, as in the guides, and learned much about the town and their personal experiences throughout the years. They told stories of homeless men who had been dead for decades a nun who pushed the eldest of the two men down the set of stairs in the cathedral when they first moved in, and we visited the usual spots. Old mines, abandoned hospitals turned into stores, and finally an old coffee shop that used to be a very popular bar and eventually a speakeasy. This was the place that changed my view on the paranormal. As we walked in, I immediately felt different. It was said that some man still resided here that had died during the Prohibition era. He would sometimes know or interact with people if he found them worth his time. In the shop there is also a single couch that remained from that era. 
that was said he would sometimes sit in and relax upon. Anyway, as I said, it felt different. I could tell the guides could too at some point, so we got settled in and started asking simple questions. After a while, we started to get a response. Slight knocks on the door to the bathroom and the walls. We all thought it may have been a coincidence or just a hoax, pulled by the guides so that we would keep on going. The knocks, though, kept on getting louder and louder. This is when we saw the apparition of a lower part of a man's legs. Let's just say the young couple were terrified and immediately left with the older guy leaving me and the younger one alone in the room. He sat on the chair across from me, whilst I sat on the couch and asked questions. My experience didn't truly happen until I ended up asking the ghost a question. I asked him, I asked him if he was remaining here to wait for a woman. No response. Knowing that in the past Jerome was a gay haven back in the 1900s, I then asked, are you still waiting for a man? I then felt the couch creak, as if someone else had sat down and I felt a pressure on the back of my neck. This was accompanied by a loud knock on the wall behind me. We promptly left after that but making sure that we thank the ghost for his time at the door. Even if it wasn't as terrifying, it will always live in my mind as what convinced me of the paranormal. I have cared for many elderly residents passing away, but my favourite story was a sweet lady who we will call V. She was very weak and just beginning the process of actively dying. We were trying to pull her nightgown up to make sure she was dry, but she started fighting us tooth and nail to keep it down while staring off into space. She'd never given us a lick of trouble in that department, and she had no modesty issues with the staff. We waited a couple of minutes and tried again, but she kept looking at the ceiling and battling with us with her hands. She was stone deaf, so there was no point in explaining ourselves. Finally, on our third attempt, V motioned her hand and whispered, Not in front of the angels. We backed off for a while after that, and she passed away that night. Okay guys, this last one is a bit of a bonus one. It's a bit funny, and I hope you enjoy it. One night last year around 3am, I was on patrol in the woods when I glanced over behind a building and I swore I saw something move around the corner. So I decided to check it out. I pulled my patrol unit around the corner and saw movement. Something was going around the corner on the next building. I headed that way and looked down the side of the building that someone would have had to go down if they had just moved around the corner. The building was so long that even at an all-out sprint, I don't think I'd have missed anyone running away and there was nowhere to duck into. But I didn't see anyone. Deciding at this point, whoever I had seen passing around the corners was definitely trying to not be seen. I went to call in my location with suspicious activity. I turned away from the driver's side window, glanced at my radio, when I caught movement out of the corner of my eye from my passenger window. So I turned my head just in time to miss it. I made my call grabbed my flashlight and exited the vehicle. I circled over to the right side of my patrol and had a good look around, still not seeing anything, when I know I saw movement. Just then, I felt someone tap on my shoulders from behind me. I just about crapped my pants and spun around and shot the flashlight up and realised it was a purple helium party balloon. One of those shiny ones with a yellow star on it. Having a chuckle, I waved the balloon off and returned to patrol. About five miles down the road and five minutes later, I glanced over to a building and saw movement around a corner and stopped just in time to see the same balloon flow out from around the corner and then drift back behind the buildings. I no longer trust balloons. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so much for listening. 
That fish story really made me laugh, so I just had to share it. I really hope you guys liked today's video as paranormal is something that you guys request a lot. So here you have it. If you guys have a topic that you would like me to cover in future, you can leave it in the description below and I'll try and get on it. Some people's suggestions have already been put into place and I'm working on them right now. I won't tell you which ones they are, but you will see soon enough. If you enjoyed today's video, something that I would profoundly appreciate is if you could like and share the video. Remember, you can email me your creepy experience to my email address, which you will find in the description below. But please remember to give me your consent. Also, a huge thank you to the subscribers who submitted their stories. They're really appreciated. Speaking of which, one of the subscribers has a gaming channel, which you should check out. The link is in the description below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. But anyway, for now guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one. And kept telling myself people of my age shouldn't get worked up over nothing. So I opened the guest house door and proceeded to tidy up the wheelbarrows away and lock up the garage, which was handily connected to the side of the guest house with its roof sheltering me from the rain. Then another nasty wind whipped up and down the path leading up to the garden, startling not just me, but all of the birds who were nesting in the bush at the time. Their unexpected and frantic screeching was enough for me. I slammed the garage door shut, locking it quickly, and scrambled back into the guest house. Now all the time we had been staying there, we never locked the door to the guest house. I guess we just felt safe behind the big high walls and electronic gates. I now see that it was a foolish thing to think. Yet something about tonight made me want to lock the door. Perhaps it was because of the weather, or the strange behaviour of the animals. Or maybe it was the notion that my boyfriend, the only person who knows I'm out here and could help me, won't be back until about three in the morning. Regardless, something about tonight made me feel that the simple wooden door and its easily smashable glass windows were all the protection I had. So I locked the door from the inside and kept the keys in my pocket. Sitting down on the sofa, I turned on the television and began watching my favourite soap opera to take my mind off my irrational fears. However, every now and again, my eyes would just veer away from the television and gaze out at the very large windows, looking out across the gravelly front yard and the distant, drain-wrenched garden. I didn't know why I kept looking out of the windows, but in hindsight, I think it was my instinct telling me to do so. To keep watch, because something was coming. Evening turned to night, and I allow a tired yawn as I watched the lights around the yard automatically come on. I looked out down past the kitchen and out the glass of the door to see the patio light turn on as it had always done. I know it seems silly, but the idea of being surrounded by light made me feel safe. Nothing can hide in the light. It seems like light was able to banish away all bad things, all the bogeymen in closets, all the monsters under the bed. It could even get rid of a nightmare. And now I was safe, surrounded by my lights. But again, very stupid. All of a sudden, a loud knock rapped upon the guest house door, almost causing me to jump out of my skin. I looked over to the door but the patio light had gone out, making it very difficult to see anything. Feeling really frightened, I turned the television off and looked out the living room window to check that the electronic gates were still shut, which they were. I kept thinking that maybe my imagination had gotten the better of me, and my fear had just made me believe that I heard the knocking at the door. However, any doubt I had washed away in seconds. A more firmer knock rattled across the glass on the door. Utter disbelief took hold, and I could feel myself leave my body. That is how shocked I was. I mean, this isn't the middle of a street of an estate. It's the middle of nowhere. For a moment, I sat there listening to the rain drumming down on the window of the guest house, and with a deep breath, I stood up, stepping towards the kitchen and the front door.